syllabus. Okay. Um, any other questions? All right, it's time. So today we're going to talk about, last time we were talking about you know, mathematical theorems, the basically three kinds of proofs. Uh, one is called a direct proof, right? If P, P is a statement, Q is a statement. So if P, then Q. We assume P is true, then we prove Q part. And today we're going to talk about control positive proof. So sometimes to prove if P then Q, but to, to prove by control positive is easier. Control positive is saying if not Q, then it's not P. Um, so today we're going to cover control positive proofs. All right, then we'll give some examples. And we'll see how to use it in propositions also. OK, I guess we can ignore this one. So let's see, what is the control positive proofs? So last time we talked about direct proof, the if P, then Q. So P implies Q, right? How do we prove? We assume P is true, then we prove Q is true. So P implies, and then we use P. So P becomes, P statement becomes assumption. Then we derive Q. So that's if P, then Q, or P implies Q proof. Uh, so related to this, called a control positive proof. Control positive to prove is to negate Q, so negation of Q implies negation of P. So not Q implies not P. So this is called a control positive. So what does it mean? That means we will uh, assume not Q is true. Then we derive not P. So we start from not Q, then we derive at not P. So those two, so P implies Q is logically equivalent to its control positive, not Q, not P, right? But it's completely different from its converse. Converse saying if Q implies P, that's not true. Okay, let's see some control positive statements. So let's see this statement. If if S is a square, then S is a rectangle. Right? That is true. Right? What is a square? A square means four sides are equal and the four angles are equal. Four angles all 90 degree. What is a rectangle? By definition, the opposite sides are equal to each other. But and also the angles all the interior angles are 90 degree. So rectangle has less restriction than square. So if S is a square, then S is a rectangle. But the converse is not true. And the converse is if S is a rectangle, then S is a square. That's not true. However, the control positive is true. Control positive will negate the then part. If S is not a rectangle, then S is not a square, which is true. 
if S is not a rectangle, then S is a, not a square. So those two statements are logically equivalent. But the converse is not. The converse is saying if S is a rectangle, then S is a square. Well, this is a false statement. Okay. Let's see another example. If f if a function is differentiable at a point, let's see this point is x equals to a, then it's continuous at the point, right? So this is a true statement. If a function is differentiable at a point, then it's continuous at a point. It's a counterpart. It's a contrapositive is saying if a function is not a continuous at a point then it's not a differentiable at this point, right? Also, it's true. So this is a contrapositive statement. It's true, but its converse may not be true. The converse is saying if a function is continuous, uh, no, right, if a function is continuous at a point, then it's a differentiable at a point. It's not 100% true, right? Sometimes it's false because it talk about absolute function. Absolute function is continuous, but at the vertex, it's not differentiable. So this is a false statement. Proposition. So suppose x is an integer. If 7x plus 9 is even, then x is odd. If we use a direct proof, if then, so this is if p, p equals to 7x plus 9 is even, then q, q is x is odd. q is odd. Because x is an integer, you know, we can prove, if we want to do direct proof, probably we need direct, we need to prove by two cases, right? Because in integer, the integer can be even, the integer can be odd. So let's see, direct proof. The sketch of a direct proof. So suppose x is an integer, uh, and the 7x plus 9 is an even integer. Huh. OK. Suppose so. Suppose x is an integer and a seven x plus nine is not even integer, right? So suppose p, you know, assume p. Think about p is seven x plus nine is even. Q is x is odd. So when we prove use direct proof, we we'll assume p is true. So that's why here we we'll assume x is an integer and a seven x plus nine is an even integer. So by definition of even, that means two is a factor, right? So that means the 7x plus 9 can be written as 2 multiplied by some integer. So 2 is a factor. So that means 2 divides 7x plus 9. Uh, subtracting 6x plus 9 from both sides, so get x equals to 2a minus 6x minus 9. So let's rewrite x term. So let's write as this. 2a minus 6x minus 10 plus 1. Minus 10 plus 1 is still minus 9, right? So then the first three terms, we can factor out 2 as a factor. So 2 times a minus x minus 5, parentheses, close parentheses, plus 1. Well, what kind of form is this? This form is the odd, right? Odd integer form. So therefore, x equals 2b plus 1. So b equals to a minus x, the inside of parentheses, a minus x minus 5, which is an integer. So if we can write a number as 2 times an integer plus 1, then by definition of odd integer that proves the number is an odd number. So by definition, x is odd because we're able to write x as 2 times an integer plus 1. Okay, so this is a direct proof. 
drag proof. We so we start with a assumption of p, then we derive at q. Or well, let's see control positive proof. Control positive proof is saying, okay, let's suppose x is not odd, right? We negate q part, we negate q. We say x is not odd. If x is not odd, that means x is even. But we, then we derive 7x plus 9 is not even, which means it's odd. So we negate both. So we suppose x is not odd, which means x is even. If x is even, we can write x as a 2 times some integer, right? So 2 divides x. Then we substitute this 2a into 7x plus 9. We get a 14a plus 9, right? So 14a plus 9, we rewrite 9 as a plus 1. Again, the first two terms, we can factor out 2. We can factor out 2. So now this becomes a 2 something, 2 times the integer plus 1. So by definition of an odd number, this shows 7x plus 9 is odd which negates even, right? which means 7x plus 9 is not even. And we call this 2b plus 1. So b is 7a plus 4. right? Since the 7x plus 9 equals 2b plus 1, b is some integer. So this is in the form of an odd number form. So that means 7x plus 9 must be odd. Well, if it's odd, it means it's not even, right? So we do not Q, we assume not Q, we arrive, we derive at not P. Okay, any questions? All right. Okay, step four. Okay, of the direct proof. Step four. Step four is saying uh, we substitute. So let me see what's your question. Oh, why isn't it three x? Let's see. Step four. Oh, it is a 3x. It is a 3x. That's a typo. It is a 3x because we factor out 2. We have a minus 3x minus 5. So this is missing 3. That's a typo. So this is a missing 3. Negative 3 should be negative 3x. Okay, great. Thank you. That's a mistake. That's a typo there. Thank you, Aiden. Yeah, you're right. That was a typo. I didn't really pay attention to it. It is a negative 3x. You are right. For control positive, we switch the p and q, then negate it. That's true. So if, let's put it, p implies q, right? Control positive of p implies q is not q implies not p. Yeah, right, we switch p and q. Then we negate both of them. All right. OK, uh, any other questions? So this is two ways of prove it. So P implies Q, we can always use its control positive to prove it. Sometimes its control positive is easier. So not Q, not P. Not Q implies not P. Okay, let's see this little summation. In the proposition above, we had to prove P implies Q where p is 7x plus 9 is even, q is x is odd. In the direct proof, we'll assume p 7x plus 9 is even. 
then use that to show Q, X is odd. In the control positive proof, we will assume the not Q, which means X is not odd. And we use this to prove not P. 7X plus 9 is not even. Any questions? Uh, okay, we'll see, let's see another proposition. Suppose x is an integer. If x squared minus 6x plus 5 is even, then x is odd. All right. So assume, so this is a p is this one, p is even, so this x squared minus 6x plus 5 is even, then q is x is odd. <clears throat> Qx is odd. So in the previous proposition, prove it using the direct method or direct proof, what control positive was equally the same in difficulty. With this proposition, the direct proof is much harder. Since if we assume x squared minus 6x plus 5 is even, then the set x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 2a for some integer a, is no clear way to rewrite the expression with isolating x and expressing it as 2b plus 1, that odd number. But the contrapositive, however, is in a similar way, um, let's see the control positive. So the direct proof will be much harder to do that. Let's see the control positive. The control positive is saying, suppose x is not odd, we negate q, right? And we want to show uh, x squared minus 6x plus 5 is odd, right? It's not even, not even means odd. Okay, let's see that. So suppose x is not odd, then x must be even. So we can write x equals to some two times some integer. Then we can plug in 2a for x. So we simplify the expression. Then in the end, we get 4a squared minus 12a plus 4 plus 1. Again, we can factor out. Uh, even means not odd, okay? Odd means not even. Because in the integers, the, a number is either even or odd. It cannot be both or cannot be neither. Zero is an even number because zero divides two. Yeah, you're right, odd instead of not even. You can see, you can see a number is odd or you can see a number is not even. It's the same, okay? There's two ways to express the same thing. So going through this, we can write in 2B plus, 2C, 2B plus 1 form again. You see, in the end, we can write as 2 times, 2 times some B. This B is 2A squared minus 6A plus 2 form. So as long as we can write a number into 2 multiplied by an integer, plus one form that proves that number is odd number. Okay, so we show this is 2b plus one form with b equals to an integer or with this expression because a is the integer, right? So this has to be an integer. Okay, so this is the using control positive using control positive. Uh, any questions for this? So we can write x squared minus, minus 6x plus 5 equals 2b plus 1 into 2b plus 1 form. That to show that the expression is odd. If it's odd, means it's not even. Okay, not even equals to odd. We can also use 
use we can also use cases with a control positive proof as we will see in the proof of the following proposition or well, let's say this one so this is third proposition suppose x and y two numbers are integers if five does not divide x y that means x y we cannot write x y equals to five times something so five five is not a factor of x y so we use this notation to represent a bar then we put a slash so five does not divide x y then five doesn't divide x and five doesn't divide y it's saying okay if five is not a factor of x times y then five is not a factor of x five is not a factor of y um Okay, let's see the proof. Suppose it's not true that 5 does not divide x and 5 does not divide y. Remember this, how do we negate and? We have this and, right? When we negate the and, it becomes or. The negation by De Morgan's law, right? It becomes, you know, either not true of those both means either this one negate this one, negate this one it becomes five divides x negate the second one that means five divides y and becomes or right this is a negation of the and we have a composite we have two statements we call composite statements when we negate compositive composite statements we want to negate both of them, but the end becomes or, the by De Morgan's law. So, so then, so it's not true that five does not divide x and five does not divide y. It seems to say it's true that five divides x or five divides y. So case one, let's see five divides x. Suppose five divides x. Then we can write x equals 5a, right? That means 5 is a factor of x. That means x can be written as 5 times another integer. But this integer we use a to represent. <clears throat> then we can rewrite xy. So xy we can rewrite as 5a times y, or 5 times a y. So that means 5 is a factor of xy or 5 divides x, y, okay, 5 divides x, y. <clears throat> so you see this is a control positive, right? Control positive is saying not q, so this is a q part, not q implies not p. Not p is 5 doesn't divide x, y, not 5 doesn't divide x, y becomes 5 divides x, y. Okay, now case 2. Case 2, 5 divides y. You know, that's by symmetry, right? Because x and y, you know, you, uh, has the same weight. That means, you know, by symmetry, usually we could use without losing genealogy to show this because a similar case x is a variable, y is a variable. There's no difference between x and y, which means, you know, they're equally weighted. So we could, if we don't, we don't really, you know, case two, because, you know, could just simply say, okay, you know, that's by symmetry. But anyway, let's say this. Suppose five divides y. So that means if y can be written as five b, you know, substitute in it. So x, y equals the five times x, b. That means 5 divides x, y, right? So 5 divides x, y, same thing, which means it's not true that 5 doesn't divide x, y. So this is control positive. By negate the q part to show not p part. Okay, not q implies not p. Okay, any questions for this?
when there is an or, we need to use cases show all possibilities. Uh, what do you mean? You mean when we negate the or? Remember De Morgan's law? When we negate and, it becomes or. To show all possibilities. Let's use this example. Let's see, uh, but if we change that, then this won't be true. Let's see, maybe we have another example. Let's see if we have it. This is just De Morgan's law, right? De Morgan's law, when we negate our composite statements, we negate the first one, we negate the second one, then the middle end becomes, becomes or. That's just by De Morgan's law. Okay, we have the following two statements about, about functions. If a function is continuous at a point, then it's defined at the point. If a function is differentiable at the point, then it's continuous at the point. So we can use the control positives of the above statement to solve the following. Let's see. So A show that the function f of x equals 4 divided by x minus 2 is not continuous at x equals 2, right? When x equals 2, we see the denominator of the function becomes 0. That's prohibited in math. We don't divide something by 0, so, so, which is not defined. So we want to use this. We want to use this one. So show p. So show that if this, show that the function f of x is not continuous. OK, not continuous at this. We want to use the first statement. The first statement is saying, if function is continuous, then it's defined, right? So how do we use the control positive? Control positive is saying, if it's not defined at a point, then it won't be continuous at the point. So we want to show this function is not defined at x equals 2, right? To show it's not continuous. It's not continuous at x equals 2. B is show that the function f of x equals, so this is a piecewise function. So we split the domain into two, two parts, right? Either x is greater than 1, or x is less than or equal to 1. So from 1, we cut into two domains. Right? If x is less than or equal to 1, the function is defined as x squared. If, function is, is, if, a, if x is greater than 1, the function is defined as 3x. So one is a linear function, one is a quadratic function. We want to show this function is not differentiable at x equals to 1. So one way to show it, to use this second statement here, right? To show a function is not differentiable at a point, we want to show the function is not continuous at the point. To B, we want to show the function is not continuous at the point x equals to 1. Then by control positive, this true, control positive this true statement that proves the function is not differentiable at point, at one. OK, let's see. It, uh, OK, well, this is obvious, right? That's the first one. It's not defined because x minus 2, 2 minus 3 equals 0, 4 divided by 0 is not defined in mathematics. So bad counter positive of this first statement is proved. It's not continuous at x equals 2. And also, at x equals 1, we can check that x equals 1 so is in this domain, in the first one. So 1 squared equals 1. So f of 1 equals to 1. But let's see if in the second one. In the second one, when x approaches to 1, so 3x is approaches to 3. If we draw the graph, we see we have a line from x greater than 1, right? We have an open circle at a 3 when x equals to 1. 
but the first part of first piece of the function is x squared when x equals one is one. So at x equals one, we have a solid dot of f of x equals one, f of one equals one. So we see the limit of f of x does not exist at x equals one. Right, so that means you know if the limit does not exist, the function of course is not a continuous. So by using the second statement, by using the control positive of the second statement, to see okay if the function is not continuous at x equals one, then it's not differentiable at x equals to one. All right, any questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Anybody has any questions? Excuse me. How would we write the proof for the for those kind of questions? Um, if we want to write proofs of this kind of question, we have to we have to put the statements. Let's say a, right? A, we have to say okay. Um, we know the fact if a function is continuous at x equals a then it is defined at x equals to a. So we have to state this true statement first. Then we say, OK, by control positive, that is saying if a function is not defined at x equals to a, then the function is not continuous at x equals to a. And we see this function f of x equals to 4 div divided by x minus 2 is not defined at x equals to 2. Because x equals to 2, we have f of 2 equals to 4 divided by 0. 4 divided by 0, which is not defined in mathematics. So by the control positive of the statement, this function is not continuous at x equals to 2. The second one, b part, will be the will be similar. You know, we have to state this statement, we see. We know the fact that if a function is differentiable at x equals a, then it is continuous at x equals a. So treating this kind of truth as common sense. So we state them first. Then we say by control positive of this statement, if a function is not continuous at x equals a, then the function is not differentiable at x equals to a. So we see this function at x equals to 1, f of x, f of 1 equals to 1, f of x equals to 1, because in the first part of the domain. But the limit of f of x, you know, the limit of, for the first part, the limit of when x approaches the 1 of 3x, so limit equals to 3, right? So limit of 3x when x approaches to 1 equals to 3, because it's a linear function. So we see the limits, not, so the left limit and right limit do not agree, right? The right limit is 3 at 1. The left limit equals to 1 at 1. So the limit does not exist when x approaches 1 for this function. And of course, we know by fact, if the limit of the function does not exist, it cannot be continuous, right? Then by the control positive of the second statement, it's not differentiable at x equals to 1. OK, any other questions? You're welcome. Any other questions? So basically, uh, right, we use control positive uh, this is how we use control passive in statements. 
if no questions, let's go to lecture uh, worksheet. Okay, let's try the first one. I'll give you like five minutes. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, actually, we did this already. But anyway, try this on your own. Show the following using contrapositive proof and show why you would get stuck in the direct proof. Um, you know what? Hold on, hold on a second. Because um, this is exactly the same as the as the sorry, because those lecture notes made by made by the course coordinator. Uh, hold on a second, let me change this a little bit. Okay, you know what? Let's just follow this. Try not to look at the lecture notes. Okay, try to do this on your own. So proposition. Suppose x is an integer. If 7x plus 9 is even, then x is odd. Right? You may do direct proof, or you may use control positive. OK, either way. The second one is this. You have a quadratic expression. If a quadratic expression is even, then x is odd. Great. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, see Maya shall means approve. Yeah, Nino, Nino has a brief. Nino, in the proof, try to see more about it. Try to see more. But uh, I understand what you are trying to tell here. Mm. OK, Jin Chiyue looks good. Yeah, it looks good, uh, Moises. Uh, Ajaya, you have to start with the assumption, right? You know, where does this 2A come from? A proof, you want to use direct proof if P, then Q, then you have to assume P, right? I think you assume X is even, right? X is not odd or X is even. It means x can be written as 2a. Make sure you write those sentences. My Wu, I do not understand your typing, you are writing, if x is even, implies x equals 2n plus 1, 
No. Two n plus one is in the odd form. If x is even, x can be written as two n, not two n plus one. Yeah, you don't want to. Okay, you don't want to write if x is even. You want to assume x is even. If p then q, that's a you know assume that's a true statement. So we we'll assume p. So assume, don't write if x is even. Assume x is even integer. Okay, p becomes our assu assumption. Yeah, Patrick, right. Then you have to conclude, right? You have to conclude. Then 7x plus 9 is in the form of an odd integer form. I then write to assume x is even. So we assume p. We derive q. Not that x is odd, right? You assume x is even, so x can be written as 2a. Then plug in 7x plus 9 form. Then in the end, 7x plus 9 can be written as 2 times 7a plus 4 plus 1, so which is in odd integer, right? It's like 7x plus 9 can be written as 2b plus 1, so it's in the odd integer form. Okay, let's see. Yes, we have to assume P, right? All right, so Patrick, we're talking about two proofs, right? We can use if P, we can use P, P derives Q. This is called, a, you know, we'll assume P, then we derive at a q. That's called a direct proof. And or we can negate q, right? We assume not q, then we derive not p. That's called a control positive proof. So two ways. Depending on which one, which way you're using it, all right? So here, I think most people are using control positive. So using control positive, we assume not q. Then we derive not p. Okay, let's try the second one. So the second one, if x squared minus 6x plus 5 is even, then x is odd. Let's just go ahead to prove not q, assume not q, assume x is not odd, which means x is even, then we derive x squared minus 6x plus 5 is not even or is odd. So let's do the second one. Yeah, not q, assume not q, derive not p. That's called a control positive. Okay, Ishret, I don't see you are writing anything. Maria, I don't see you are writing anything. Samuel? Oh, oh Samuel has wrote, wrote something. No, that's Shamika's or Samuel, right? Samuel wrote something, all right. Make sure you participate in this.
Okay, Xiaomi's looks good. Okay, uh, Moises, is it proof? Okay, control positive. Suppose X is even, we want to show. Don't say then. If you already give these statements, there's no point to prove it, right? You say, suppose X is even, we want to show that X squared minus 6X plus 5 is odd. Okay, good. Oh, Maria. Okay, Maya looks good. Oh, Maria, is it difficult for you? That's great, right? It's great. Let 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 me know. Let me know. Try it. Okay. Try to type in something. So let me see where I can help you. Okay, Linus looks good. Um, my Wu, read one more step. Read um, before your conclusion, x is odd by definition. Read the expression equals to 2b plus 1 form, where b equals to 2n squared minus 6n plus 2, which is an integer, right? Because 2b plus 1 is the definition of odd number, odd integer. Sometimes, you know, mathematical proofs has to be solid, okay? No one can poke holes in it. Has to be very, very solid. Solid by what? Solid by definition, okay? Solid, everything we say has to fit into definition. And the definition of an integer is two times an integer plus one. So, so 2n squared minus 6n plus 2 is an expression. So we want to use another variable to represent this expression. So it's necessary to say, you know, 2b plus 1 form and b equals to 2n squared minus 6n plus 2. Okay, in mathematical proofs, it's necessary. Okay, Samuel looks good. Okay, Shamika. Um, all right, all right, you're seeing, before you see let x equals 2k, right? I think you need to see one more thing because we're negating x is an odd uh, sentence. We say assume x is not odd, right? Then x can be written as 2k, where k is not integer. So mathematical proof is a, is kind of tricky. We have to we have to follow exact form. It's like it's like you know mathematical proof is another kind of language people agree upon. We have to see this way. Okay, Michael, you're missing. You, Michael, you're missing x equals to a. All right. Suppose x is not odd. That's x is even, good. Then x can be written as 2a. So x equals to 2a, where a is an integer. What do you mean, therefore, x is odd? No, Michael, you are not proving x is odd. You already suppose x is not odd. You want to prove the expression x squared minus 6x plus 5 is odd. You want, you want to prove that. Michael, do you see the mistake?
Okay, each red, you cannot see as x is not odd. No. Mathematical proof, we cannot use as. We have to say assume. Oh, you mean as is abbreviation for assume, right? Assume x is not odd, x is even. What do you mean f of 2n? We do not have a function here. We don't have f of 2n, f. Ishra, do you see that? We have, we have no function. It's just expression. You don't need to put f of 2n. There's no function in that sentence. And also, again, yours is similar to some ones I said before. You have to you have to write one more step. You have to write 4n squared minus 12n plus 5 equals to 2b plus 1 form. All right? It is an even number. No, it's red. Your proof is not right. OK. Which one is an even number? We want to prove it's odd number, right? OK, I then assume x is even, then x equals 2a, OK, for a to be an integer. Make sure you define x equals 2a first. Then you substitute, then you have the second step. You substitute into the expression. You don't prove x is odd. We don't prove x is odd. We prove x squared minus 6x plus 5 is odd. Because you see, you see a step five, you write a two times parenthesis plus one, right? So this is in the odd integer form. So you just write this one as two b plus one, where b equals to two a squared minus six a plus two. Okay, those steps are necessary. All right? You need to get used to it. A J are also missing X equals to A, right? You assume X is not odd, which means X is even. Then you want to write X equals to 2K. In your case, it's 2K. 2K. So 2K, you need to put a parenthesis around 2K, then raise by square. If you use 2K, your K in there, so this 2K plus one, you cannot use K here. You can write it 2B plus one where b equals the k, right? You, you see, you're, you cannot write as k equals 2k squared minus 6k. You cannot use the same variable. Use another variable. There's so many variables for you to use. OK, uh, Patrick, assume x is not odd, then x is even. Don't write a 1. x is even, comma, x equals to 8 for some integer 8. All right? You don't need a 1 there. Patrick, you have to write more. You have to write more. You know, equals 2b plus 1, where b is 2a squared minus 6a plus 2. Yeah, I said I'm confused by the closing statement. The closing statement, you see, okay, here you already have two times, two times the parentheses plus one, right? All you have to do is write this equals to 2b plus one, where b equals to the expression inside the parentheses. Because of the definition of odd integer, is two times the variable plus one. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It's red. There's no f of 2n. There's no function. We're not talking. There's no function in this in these questions. There's no f of 2n. Unless you define so. Unless you, you know, you're like, okay, I don't want to write x squared minus 6x plus 5. Let me write this as f of f of x. Otherwise, you cannot use f of 2n. Doesn't make sense, all right?
Okay, George looks good. Oh, Maria, if you want to use a direct proof, if which means P implies Q for this, it's a difficult. It's difficult, all right? Maria, you say, you're supposed, you're assuming P. You assume this even, then you want to show X is odd, that's super difficult. You want to show the control positive. You want to assume X is not odd. X is even. Okay, your first statement is wrong because your calculation is X equals to A. So you suppose you suppose X is even or X is not odd. Control positive is not Q to derive not P. Does it make sense, Maria? So P is X squared minus six X plus five is even. Q is X is odd. Direct proof is difficult. So we prove by control positive. Control positive is not Q implies not P. No, you don't prove, okay, my Wu, P implies Q. For control positive, you prove, you assume not Q, prove not P. Yeah, you assume not Q, you prove not P. Yeah, I think the answer is right. Maria, again, see, assume x is not odd, then x equals to 2a, right? Then the expression equals to 2a squared. Mathematical proof cannot have any holes in it. Mathematical proof does not allow the least degree box. Right. It's just like a computer program. If you have, if you have the least bug, it doesn't run. That's mathematical proof. It has to be solid. No one can poke holes in it. You start with assume x is not odd. That means x is even. So x equals to two a. Then the expression x squared minus six x plus five equals to two a squared. So on and so forth. Where, right, once you read it equal to 2b plus 1, you have to define b, where b equals to a squared minus 6a plus 2. Maria, direct proof means if p, we assume p, we derive q, we prove q. Control positive, we assume not q, we, de we prove not p. Okay, I then looks okay. But your second step, you need to write down x squared minus 6x plus 5 first. Write down the original statement, original expression in the statement, equals to 2a squared minus, minus so on and so forth. For three, right, we split, George, for three, we split into two cases. We assume, right, five divides x, one case, then five divides y, another case. Professor. Yeah. So for the, the closing statement, you just repeat the original um, expression and then confirm that 2b plus 1 is odd? 
not to confirm, right? To confirm x squared minus 6x plus 5 is odd. Because you are, you are able to write x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 2b plus 1, where b equals to an integer. So 2b plus yeah. 1 is defined, right? That's what I had. And you said you wanted uh, b first, and then like 2b plus 1 is odd. Yeah. 2b plus 1 is the, by the definition of odd integer, right? Where b is not integer, right? Right. Yeah, that's a, your close your close statement is to show in the end, you know, x squared, you start with x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 2a squared, da, 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 da. You do the calculation. In the end, write down that equals 2b plus 1, where b equals to the, the expression inside the parentheses. Mm -hmm. Right. So for the opening statement, you just want assume x is even and then comma x equals 2a. When it's right, because... Right, because you assume x is even, mm -hmm. that means x can be written as a 2a, where a is an integer. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I don't be, I don't see, I see one, assume X is even. I don't, I don't, I do not see your B, uh, the B. Can you copy and paste here? Step six. Oh, here. Uh, assume X is even. X equals two a. So two step two, you need to start with the expression x squared minus six x plus five equals to two a squared minus six times two a plus five. Then you simplify. You simplify. So three, four. You simplify five. You factor out two. Then plus one. You have the inside expression equals to b. 6 is in 2b plus 1 is odd, where b equals to yes. So you need a conclusion statement, right? Because when I prove 2b, 2b plus 1 is a definition of odd number. So the, because this x squared minus 6, OK, you you just missing x squared minus 6x plus 5. Do you see that? Because we want to show x squared minus 6x plus 5 is Odd. Because we can write that as 2b plus 1. It's there. I don't see it. Okay, let me see if this is your... Oh, I see. Okay, let me copy paste. No. Your b is not x squared minus 6x plus 5, right? Let me see. How can I change this? Um, I done. Let's let's uh, change it a little bit. So assume x is even. X can be read as 2a for a is an integer and two two you have to start with x squared minus two step two equals two this this the three can be simplified to be this four so you don't need this three so Please do not have me anything yet for now. Um, let me try to change items proof equals to this. So five equals to this. Now equals to to be where b equals to two a square plus six a plus two. Oops. Two. 
2a squared plus 6a plus 2. Then, so this shows this shows that x squared don't copy anything yet equals to 2b plus 1 is not integer it's not r it's odd okay and then you can look at this now assume x is even, then x can be written as 2a for a is an integer. So x squared, you start with x squared minus 6x plus 5, because we want to show this expression is odd. Equals to, so we substitute x into 2a, then you do the calculation, then in the end you write it as a 2b plus 1, then you define b, where b is this, the, the, the expression inside the parentheses. So this shows, because we can write x squared minus 6x plus 5 as 2b plus 1 form, where b is an integer. So we sh this shows x squared minus 6x plus 5 is odd. Does it make sense? The key here is to write the expression in the add integer form. Right. To define b is to write b equals to the expression inside the parentheses. Because the definition is that add integer has a 2k plus 1 form, where k is an integer. OK, great. Let me see. Uh, Ajaya. But this will only need to show one case. Which one? Or oh, this Jin Qi. Yeah, for three, you you really need to show one case. Because x, y, remember last time we talked about the W L O G W L O G without equals the without lose of generality. Relativity. You can use this use this phrase, okay? Because to prove x to prove for x is the same to prove for y. So the two proofs are exactly the same. You know, we only change x and the y x to be y. So you can use this term without without the lose of generality for the second case. Okay, let me see your proofs. For three, we negate the Q, right? What's P, what's Q? P is if P is a five does not divide X, Y. Q is five does not divide X and five does not divide Y. So when we negate Q, it becomes five divides X or five divides Y. Patrick, do you see the uh, I changed identity uh, proof under my name? I wrote, I copy and paste, I changed, I did a little bit change under my name. It's yeah, too old. I see it. Okay. All right. Okay, Maya. Maya, when you prove for x, you don't see without losing of generality, right? Suppose you just see suppose five divides x. Five, suppose five divides x. Da 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 da. Good, 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 good. Therefore, five divides x y. Okay, good. 
But all this is under your control positive, control positive statements. Let me see who did this first. Before this, anybody? Oh, Jin, she already has it. Uh, Lino has it. Let me see who did the first. Okay, case one. Let me start with Xiaomi's. Xiaomi says, case one, assume five divides x. Okay, before we see this, let's, let's better control positive these statements. All right? So say something like this. Um, we are using, we're going to prove, we are going to prove it's control, the control positive, control positive of the statement. We're going to prove the control positive of the statement, which is if five divides x or 5 divides divides y, then 5 divides x, y. So this gives the people a little bit uh, uh, direction where we're going because we're trying to prove this statement. So we need to lead the reader to tell them, you know, what, what, what we're doing. So then, so we're going to prove the control positive of the statement. If, x, if 5 divides x or 5 divides y, then 5 divides x, y. Then we can follow by Jin, she's saying, without the losing, so W, L, O, G, right, we just prove one case. Let's go back to Xiaomi's. So Xiaomi, right, you divide into case one, case two, that's perfectly fine. But if you don't want to read as many, just say WLOG, assume five divides x, then five equals to x equals to five a for some a in z in the integer. So we have x y equals to five times a y. Then we factor of five, five of eight times a y. So five is a factor of x y. That means this means five divides x y. Okay. You see this, so we need to give a reader a little bit of direction, right? All right, great. Uh, yeah, Jin Chi, right. Without losing of generality, generality means, you know, we have different cases to prove, but those cases are very similar. So we just prove one case. Right, Moises, you see, right. Read down the proposition and then tell the reader. Okay, good. Control positive. Suppose it's not true that five da, 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 da. Okay, yours your proof is exactly similar to the to the lecture notes, right? It's not true that five oh, okay, that's okay. Case one, case two. Right, some of you see, assume that 5 divides x or 5 divides y. We want to show, all right, add one more sentence. We want to show that 5 divides x, y, which is the control positive of the statement. Okay, anybody has any questions? So basically this exercise is exactly the same as, you know, in the lecture notes. Um, I don't know why she does that, but uh, so I assume the homework will be different um, practices. 
so anyone has any questions? Okay, no, if no questions, you know, we can finish early today. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow then. And I see probably three people haven't finished homework yet. So I'm going to um, post solutions of homework eight. So anyone wants to finish your homework before I post? I see only 13 students, po you know, uh, loaded the homework. Let me see now, maybe, maybe all of you loaded your homework. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or oh, 15. Okay, I think everybody loaded the homework up to now. So I can post the solutions. Oh, okay, Ajaya. Right, okay. So I probably will will upload the solutions by three also. I just wait for you to to submit your homework. Okay. All right. I'll wait, no problem. Okay, anybody has any questions? Um, if not, practice on this, do your homework. I'll see you tomorrow then. Yes, I have a question about the final. Okay, yeah, what's your question? Uh, is it gonna be based on everything that we're doing or just the... Yeah, it's a cumulative. Okay, so um, how many will we, will we be getting for the proof part? Oh, I don't know yet. We'll talk about that later. We'll have oh. two more classes. Yeah, but make sure you get it. All right, if you have questions, you can ask. Yeah, I get uh, most of the part. I get stuck on when it's function. Which one? Which one is a function? Um, one oh, of the, you mean uh, the one in the lecture notes? No, for the homework. Oh, for the homework. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah I, I, I will try. Trying. Okay, no, keep I, trying. I, if you still have a problem, we can talk about later. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, George, next Monday is our final. We we'll only have three classes. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, then that's it. No more classes. So two more classes, well done. And next Monday is our final.